Okay, we're uh, sitting here on an outcrop of the Carboniferous Limestone. This was laid down in tropical seas 320 to 360 million years ago. It is underlain at depth by the old red sandstone of Devonian age. This is the view of Van Heer, the summit of which is formed of the plateau beds of the old red sandstone. And it is overlain by white quartzite of the Millstone Grit series. Old red sandstone is impermeable. The Millstone Grit, basal grit of the Millstone Grit series is, uh, has fracture permeability. This shows the sequence of the Carboniferous Limestone with the plateau beds of the Old Red Sandstone underneath and the basal grit of the Millstone Grit series above. The Carboniferous Limestone is divided into formations and these are um, discrete, easily recognizable parts of the sequence. Um, they're a convenient mapping tool. The individual formations are made up of beds. The beds are the smallest units within the sequence. They range in thickness from uh, a, a centimeter through to several meters in thickness. The individual beds are, have partings above and below and these are called bedding planes. The beds themselves can vary even within a limestone sequence according to the chemical mineralogical composition, the presence or absence of fossils, the general appearance and even the colour means that you can distinguish one bed from another. The okay. lowest formation in the sequence is the lower limestone shales, which as the name suggests uh, comprises calcareous shales with very thin limestones. This is overlain in turn by the dolice limestone about a hundred meters of it and uh, this is a dark bituminous limestone. It's got a fairly high sulfur content as limestones go. You can virtually smell your way up the succession if you keep knocking the rocks as you go. Most of the caves in this area are found within the Dolice limestone. Again that is overlain by a rather pure um, uh, oolite, which is forms this scarp slope, and uh, that is a very pure limestone, and it is relatively free of cave passages. There are one or two excursions upwards within the big cave system, but these are very rare indeed. The presence or the absence of cave passages means that it forms a very stable roof over a large part of the cave. So we'd be seeing this at various locations within the cave. In turn, that is overlain by a rather more uh, uh, soluble limestone, the Penwilt limestone formation, and that in turn by the upper limestone shales. This is thin, petering out when we get up to Pouf Bavare. At the contact between the Dolice limestone and the pe uh, Pendiri Nuolite is a rather calcareous sandstone, or a sandy limestone. This is about one to two meters thick and is a very useful marker horizon within the sequence. It is very variable in composition, having variable amounts of silica and uh, variable amounts of calcium carbonate. In places it forms a pretty good light white quartzite and in other places it is almost indistinguishable from the limestones, uh, just having a few uh, sand grains. In places, the honeycomb sandstone is underlain and in other places slightly overlain by a dark pyritic shale. Uh, this weathers readily and produces sulfuric acid, which reacts with the limestone to produce the mineral gypsum or selenite. 